We've talked about using the rational zeros theorem to help us factor polynomials. And we have talked about graphing polynomials. What we haven't done is put those two things together. So let's do that now. I'm gonna give you three examples and let's start with this one. The directions will be factor completely and graph. And here's the polynomial that we'll be working with. Let me remind you that our first step always when factoring a polynomial is to take out any um, common factor. So here we have a common factor of two. So let's make sure we take that out. So I would have f of x equals two times x cubed minus nine x squared plus 15 x plus 25. Now I always check to see that if I could factor further using our traditional strategies, like I would look to see that if I could factor that by grouping. You could take time to check that. It turns out that one does not work by grouping. So I'm gonna continue. Let me move this up so that we have more space. So now I am gonna be working to factor this polynomial right here. Since our factoring by grouping wasn't going to work, I'm gonna start with my list of possible rational zeros based on my rational zeros theorem. so that I have a finite number of numbers to check to see if they are zeros. Remember the possible rational zeros uh, can be listed by thinking of factors of the constant divided by factors of the leading coefficient. And I'm, I'm not even getting that too involved. So I'm looking at factors of 25 over factors of one. So we'd have plus or minus one, plus or minus five, and plus or minus 25. Those are the possible rational zeros, if there are any rational zeros. So I'm gonna start with one and see if it works. Now you could do direct substitution to see if it would equal zero. I'm gonna use synthetic division and just show you that or remind you about that. We'll try one. Remember our coefficients are one, negative nine, 15, and 25. So we're going to bring down that first coefficient and multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. Notice our remainder is not a zero, so one is not a zero. So I'm going to continue. We'll try negative one. And you can try any of these numbers you'd like. I try to go through in the order that is easiest to hardest for me. And by the way, if you could have told by looking that one didn't make this equal to zero, and many of you could do that, you wouldn't have even had to do this synthetic division. Let's try negative one now. So my coefficients again are one, negative nine, 15, and 25. Bring down my one, and I multiply and add and continue that process. Uh, Oh, this was negative one right here. And we have a negative 10, there we are. And then oh, negative one times negative 10 is positive 10. Um, and that gives me 25. We multiply these two together, we get negative 25 and zero. Let me start from the beginning, make sure you understood what happened. Brought down that one, multiplied, and then added. And that uh, gives us negative 10 down here. Sorry, that's not very clear. Multiply negative one times negative 10, that's positive 10, and add, multiply and add. And this time we did have a remainder of zero. So that means negative one is a zero, and that means x plus one is a factor. So I can rewrite this polynomial this way. F of x equals, I still have that two, times x plus one, because it's x minus that zero, times, and now here are the coefficients of our other polynomial. So there's our constant, there's our coefficient of x, there's our coefficient of x squared, so we have x squared minus 10x plus 25. And once we have this boiled down to a quadratic, we don't need to use the rational zeros theorem anymore. We can factor in our traditional way, or if it doesn't factor using our traditional strategies for factoring a trinomial, 
you could use um, synthetic division or quadratic formula to find the zeros and that would help you factor. But this one does factor relatively easily. I'm gonna bring down my x plus one and my factor of two and this factors into x and x. Our 25 would be five and five with minuses on both. So if I rewrite this in a little bit nicer way, I'd have f of x equals two times x plus one times x minus five squared. So here's the polynomial in factored form. So let's graph it now. I'll squeeze it in right over here. Let's see, our zeros are any number that makes the polynomial equal to zero. This constant doesn't generate any zeros, but this factor does. X minus one gives us a zero of negative one, which we saw right here. And this factor gives us a zero of five. Remember, we would say negative one has a multiplicity of one because the exponent was a one here and five has a multiplicity of two, and that helps us determine how the graph is going to look. This was a cubic equation. I didn't mention at the beginning, but cubic equation with leading coefficient positive. So generically speaking, we already knew the graph would look something like this. Right? We're just filling in the details right here. So if our zeros are negative one, and five, and we know our graph looks like this, we could come up with a pretty decent sketch, probably pretty quickly. So I know it's gonna start down here. The graph will cross at negative one, remember because the multiplicity is one, so it's odd, so it's gonna cross. Go up, I don't know how high, turn around at some point, but when we get down to five, the multiplicity is even, so we know it will just touch and turn back around. So our graph looks something like this. Remember when multiplicity is odd, it will cross. When the multiplicity is even, it will just touch. The other thing that we should do to make this graph nice is put the y-intercept in, and that's where really this two will come into play. This two tells how stretched out or not stretched out this graph is. And this y-intercept uh, will be, be important to represent how this particular graph looks. So for the y-intercept, we know we can make x a zero. You can put zero in for x here, but we could also do it pretty easily right up here at the in the first line. If we put in zero here and here and here, those would all become zero. And we can see that the y-intercept would be 50. So f of zero would be 50. So our y-intercept right here, we can label, and we have this graph complete. So this is the way this polynomial looks. And notice we don't know how high it goes here. I didn't have that value, but that's okay. We have a pretty decent rough sketch. If you needed to, you could plot a few more points or you take calculus and you find out exactly how to find that point up there. Let's go on to the next example. We'll use the same directions, which are factor completely and graph. So here's our next polynomial. For this one, Notice that our leading coefficient is negative. I don't like to graph with that negative out front. I like to take uh, factor it out so that my leading coefficient will look positive in the polynomial that I'm gonna be working with. So I would factor out that negative one. So let's do that. Negative and then x to the fourth minus 11x squared plus 18. Of course, the coefficient is still negative one, but now I'm gonna be looking at this polynomial here, and I don't have to worry about that negative one at all. Now we could jump in and work with the rational zeros theorem or write the potential or possible rational zeros looking at this number, but here's what I wanted to remind you about with this one. Don't overlook your old strategies. 
this is one that we can factor without using that big tool of the rational zeros theorem. We could factor it just like we normally do trinomials. I'm gonna set up my two sets of parentheses. Instead of an x and an x, I have an x squared and an x squared. 18, we can break up into two and nine. That gives us our 18. And if we put negatives on both, notice we do get a negative 11x squared for the middle. This one factors further, just as a difference of two squares, so let's do that. So we have negative x squared minus two times x plus three times x minus three. Now this is factored completely with respect to the integers, but let's do a little bit more. We know we can find the zeros from this factor by setting that factor equal to zero. And if you solve that equation, we get plus or minus the square root of two. So in fact, what is the case? is this can be factored into x minus the square root of two and x plus the square root of two. Remember our factor theorem says, if you have a number that is a zero, x minus that number would be a factor. So I can put in these as factors. So I have x plus the square root of two, x minus the square root of two, and we still have x plus three and x minus three. We now have it factored completely with respect to the reals. This was factored with respect to the integers, but now it's factored completely with respect to the reals. And now notice our zeros are very clear. Square, negative square root of two, positive square root of two, negative three and positive three. And we can come up with our graph pretty easily. I'm gonna slide this up a little bit so we won't see the top part. But let's do a respectable graph for this particular problem. Notice it was, oh, no, let me bring it back down for just a moment. Fourth degree, leading coefficient was negative. So we know that the graph, generically speaking, would look something like this, very generally. But using that information, we can do better by using the zeros. The zeros are plus or minus the square root of two and plus or minus three. So let's put that on our grid here. Plus or minus the square root of two. Square root of two is about 1.4. And of course, negative square root of two. And positive three and negative three. And we know the graph will look something like this and it will start it down here. Remember, if you forgot what, whether the graph would start down here or up here, or from this side, start up here or down here, you could pick a value, like I could pick a number to the right of three, like four. And if I popped four into each factor, I would find that I would have a positive number multiplied by a positive number, multiplied by a positive number, multiplied by a positive number, multiplied by a negative number. So if I put in a number to the right of four, I would have a negative number. And it reminds me that the graph should be coming from down here. So if I use that fact that it's here, I know that the graph is going to cross at each of these zeros. Remember the zeros are also called the x-intercepts. Each of these are to the first power. So I'm gonna start over here just because it's easier for me to draw. I'm gonna cross at negative three, cross at negative two. I don't know how low it goes. Cross at square root of two and cross at three and it comes down this direction. I missed that point that I drew there, but that's all right. And we have a fairly respectable graph for this particular curve, or for this particular polynomial. The, again, what I haven't listed right here is the y-intercept. Let's find that. We substitute in zero to the function, 
You can substitute it in here, or we could come way back up here and put zero in. If you put in f of zero, you would have zero plus zero minus 18. So our y-intercept is negative 18 right here. And we have a fairly decent graph for this particular polynomial. Let's do one more. Same directions, factor completely and graph. So here's our polynomial. Let me move this so we have more space. It is fourth degree, leading coefficient is positive. So I, generically speaking, I expect the graph will look something like this when we're done. Not exactly like that, perhaps, but the end behavior will be like this. We know it will be going up it on the right and on the left. The details in the middle is what we're trying to figure out. But let's go. Let's get this factored. I'm going to start with the rational zeros theorem and write into my possible rational zeros. And they are... Factors of 1 over factors of 2. So plus or minus 1 over 1 or plus or minus 1 over 2. Those are our possible rational zeros. So I'm going to start with the easiest one to test. I'm going to start with 1. So my coefficients are 2, negative 5, 3, 1, and negative 1. And let's go. Bring down the first number. Multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add, multiply and add. Good. Our first number actually was a zero. So now we know this polynomial factors into f of x equals x minus 1, because we know 1 is a zero, we know x minus 1 is a factor. And our other factor will have coefficients that are these numbers. So this is our constant. There's our first degree term, second degree term, third degree term. So 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 0x plus 1. And we're partway there. Let's keep going. Now, just because 1 was a 0 once doesn't mean it can't be a 0 again. In fact, if you pop in one right here into this polynomial, I hope you can see that we'd have two minus three plus one. That would be equal to zero. So we know in fact that one will be a zero again. So let's continue. Now remember I'm breaking down this. So I use the coefficient of this polynomial. So two, three, whoop, negative three, zero and one. So bring down the first number and use your process of synthetic division. Remainder zero as we expected. So we have f of x equals this x minus one right here times another x minus one because of this. So I'm just gonna write x minus one squared times two x squared minus x minus 1. And again, we have it boiled down to a quadratic polynomial. So we don't need to use the rational zeros theorem. We can factor it in our traditional way. So I use trial and error. So I'll do that here. So my 2x squared is going to be broken up into 2x and x. There aren't a whole lot of things to try. 1 would be 1 and 1 if we can get this to work. And let's see, I need a negative 1x in the middle. So I'm going to put a negative 1 here and a positive 1 here. So on the outside, I'd have negative 2x. On the inside, I have a positive 1x that adds up to negative 1x. Notice I have a third polynomial now that is x minus 1. So let's put that together. So I have f of x equals x minus 1 cubed times 2x plus 1. So here's the polynomial we'll now be graphing, right? Here it is in when all multiplied out, fourth degree, 
we have it looking something like this. We expect it to look something like that. We're just trying to figure out the details. So let me put the graph right here where we have some space. We know the zeros are one. and negative one half. And one is a zero with multiplicity three, so we know it will cross there because it's odd. And negative one half is a zero with multiplicity one, so it will cross there as well. So let's put those on. Negative one half and one. And now we can graph our polynomial. We know the end behavior will look like this. It's gonna be coming from up here and it's gonna finish up here. There's one little extra detail that I wanna make sure that I mention. I'll get there in just a minute. So let's start up here. We know it's gonna cross at negative one, negative one half. Gonna come down, we don't know how far. But at some point, it's going to turn around and come back toward 1, and we know it's going to cross at 1. Here's a detail that I want to mention. If the multiplicity is odd, we know it crosses. But notice this is a third, uh, it's a degree 3 here. That actually means it will cross kind of like the y equals x cubed graph. So instead of going straight through, it will go through kind of like the graph y equals x cubed. You know y equals x cubed is a graph that looks like this, comes and flattens out and goes back up. If your factor has multiplicity 3, it will go through the x-intercept looking like this. So instead of just crossing, I'm going to come up. It's going to flatten out a little bit and come through that direction. Still crosses, but it flattens out. I just wanted to show you that detail. So the end behavior we knew was going to be this way. We used our zeros that and was going to cross at both of them. I don't have my y-intercept yet. We know that is what we get when we substitute zero into the function. We pop in zero, we'd get zero minus zero plus zero plus zero minus one. So the y-intercept is negative 1. And now we have a graph for this particular polynomial. Let me bring it down. So here was our original polynomial. Here's the way it factored, and there's the way the graph looks.